Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. This morning I have a brief word from the Lord. This is a right now effective word that I am bringing from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I ask that you will please listen. I pray that your heart will be open to receive this word and that you will have the understanding of the Holy Spirit given to you. This is a retroactive word, means that meaning that it applies to times of the past. It is a future word, meaning that it applies to times of the future. And it is a right now word speaking to people who I will simply call those in the valley of decision, meaning that you are right in the middle of perhaps thinking about the things that I'm going to speak about in this, in this video. Perhaps you have you are performing or committing the sins that I'm going to speak about in this video. The Lord God has a word for you. This morning I was spending time with the Lord in prayer, praise and worship more like. Praise and worship is a very effective way to draw near to the spirit of the Lord. And as I was drawing near to the Lord in praise and in worshiping the Lord um, on my knees, I began to see an image as if far away in front of me. And this image, because it was blurry, it was a blurry image and it was far away lifted up at the roof of my house. This image, the easiest way that I can put it is that it looked like the Sistine Chapel far away if you blurred it. So you know how the Sistine Chapel is painted with, I think it has a picture of God and man touching and the spark of life and whatever Michelangelo um, imagined heaven might look like. And so I saw this blur of colors, different colors blurred together against the backdrop of, you know, the heavens. And that's what it looked like to me. But as, as I continued to sing to the Lord and wonder, what is this that I'm seeing? The picture began to clarify. And what I saw was an image of the Lord Jesus Christ, very huge. And he had his arm crooked like this. And in the crook of the Lord's arm was simply millions of little babies, fat, naked, happy babies of every conceivable color, every skin color and race under the sun. And as I was looking at the Lord, he was looking at these millions and millions and millions of children with such love and tenderness. And he was bent over them like this, as a mother would bend over her child, and my heart just broke because I knew that those were all the children who never got to come into this world because they had been aborted by their mothers and fathers. And when I say aborted by their mothers and fathers, I mean just that. I am a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore I am not called to follow after the popular understandings that people like to cling to in this world, that when somebody commits an abortion, it is the woman's problem, it is the woman's sin. A woman cannot conceive of a child by herself. It only happened one time, and the millions of abortions that take place across the world now are not immaculate conceptions. Men put seed into the bellies of women, intemperate men, intemperate women who cannot possess their vessels in whole holiness, but want to participate in sexual activity ahead of the time without preparation, without necessary maturity, and lest I leave out, without the first requirement for sexual activity and childbearing, which is marriage that is recognized by both the state where you live and the Lord Jesus Christ. People move into sexual activity and then a child is conceived. But because people have more important things to think about, like their careers and their families and their lives ahead of them. Their, you have your whole life ahead of you. I'm sure that phrase is familiar to many of us as we listen to this. The child's life is a secondary consideration and the child is cut off. And when an abortion is committed, it is the sin of the mother who conceived that child and it is the sin of the father who release that child into the mother's womb. The only time I would think that a man would be exonerated is when an abortion is committed without his knowledge, when the woman takes it into her own hands and goes and cuts short the child's life without the father's knowledge and without giving him a chance to say anything about it. And so I saw how much the Lord loves children. I saw him bowed over them as the shepherd that he is. The one who said, suffer not the little children, suffer them. 
to come unto me. Let them come. I saw that Jesus is big enough to hold and receive all these little ones who have been sent home ahead of their time, who have not been given a voice, who have not been given the ability and the freedom to come into the world by the people who think that sex is merely an act of pleasing the body and do not understand that it is actually a very powerful spiritual communion in which two souls are joining and in which the Lord who conceived and created the act of sex in which the Lord is expecting that should a child be conceived, he can trust this child to the people who are participating in this act. I saw the Lord holding these millions and millions of children. And as I was looking at this image, my heart was cut. My heart was cut for many reasons. My heart was cut because I can't even have praise and worship and have it be focused on my own relationship with the Lord. Because when a person is truly open to the Father, when a person truly loves God, the Lord will always want to talk about his feelings because that is what happens with friends. A friend is somebody you can go to and say, I feel this way, or I have something to tell you. A friend is where you can trust what's on your heart. And so often when I come to commune with my friend, I get to see what all the other people who are not friends are doing. And so I am bringing this word here and I'm letting you know by the spirit of the Lord that if you have committed this act, if you have been part of the selfish multitude that has taken the life of a child, whether you thought that you were too young, if you were too young, you should not be indulging in the things of adults. Sexual activity is strictly the purview of adults. Sexual activity is strictly for adults who are in a committed, recognized marriage. And so I will say to all those who come to this channel asking me questions that truly are the height of foolery. I am in a relationship and I love her, but we're not married. Do we need to be married? Isn't marriage just a construct of the state? Did you see the state in existence when Abraham was with Sarai? Did you see anything mentioned about governments? Do you not understand that from the creation, from the foundation of the world, when the Lord brought a wife to Adam, that God gives a woman in marriage to a man, and therefore it is first and foremost a spiritual contract. And then because God, God's law honors to a large extent the laws that we have here. And so it is understood, for instance, as you look at the story of Isaac with Rachel and Leah, that when their marriage took place, their marriage didn't take place because a man and a woman came to a tent together, but the marriage was actually a public feast, which all of Laban's family was there and Isaac was there. And it was publicly recognized that this man is taking a wife today. So marriage de definitely carries with it the public recognition that this man is taking this woman. So if the two of you are shacking up and bringing children into this world, you are in fornication. It does not matter how long you have, you have been doing it. It does not matter if you are telling yourself that you are common law partners or whatever it is that you are creating to form a reality in your house. You are in fornication and your children are living under the curse of your fornication. And so it behooves you to hear the truth because these are the things that are not being addressed in the church. And this is why the church is wearing a coat of sin. As much as I am wearing this coat, the church of Jesus Christ is coated with her sin and she will not hear the truth. Fornication is a sin. Conceiving a child outside of wedlock is a sin. Subsequent abortions to cover up the act of your fornication is a sin. If you are a married woman who has committed adultery, received a pregnancy, and aborted the child to hide it from your husband as David and Bathsheba tried to kill Uriah to hide their sin, it is sin. And understand that it doesn't matter today because I know that the larger portion of the 
of the audience of the master's voice lives in the Western world. And you may live in a world where these momentary constructs that we call governments, that we called, that we call states, have passed laws and enshrined in some of their constitutions that it is okay to take a child's life because there's other considerations like it may have been by force or your body, your choice. I want to let you know that when you perish, whether suddenly or at the end of a long and fruitful life, and you stand before the one with whom we all have to do. That is one of God's names. The one with whom we all have to do. It means that he is the one with whom every soul has to deal at the end of its life. He's not going to ask you if you're from Denmark, Sweden, or Ghana, or the United States of America. There will be no mention made of the laws that governed your earthly territory. He will simply ask you, what about the child that was in your womb at such and such a date, up to such and such a date? The laws of heaven are eternal, they never change, and you will be judged according to those laws. So whether you committed this in marriage without your husband's knowledge, or whether you committed this in marriage when you and your husband had five children and the both of you decided as an executive decision that you could not afford another child, whether you did this as a 14-year-old or as a 16-year-old, as a 21-year-old, as a 37-year-old business executive who was waiting for her next promotion and just couldn't afford to be pregnant because she would lose her competitive edge against her male compatriots. I'm speaking to you now and telling you that the Lord Jesus hates this sin and he will judge each and every single person who has aborted a child without repentance. If you are someone watching this video and you have done this in your past and you are still carrying the guilt of this, understand that there is a very clear difference between guilt and repentance. You may feel guilty, but if you have not repented before the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are upon you and should you lose your life, you will be judged in full for this sin. However, if you have committed this and you have genuinely cried out to the Lord as a born again believer in repentance for this sin, and you have told the Lord that you fully recognize your error and the wickedness of your spirit, male and female, I am speaking to you. Men do not think that you are exempt from what I am saying. If you are the father of a child and with your knowledge that child was terminated, you are as guilty as the mother. In speaking of abortion on the master's voice, the Lord has actually made known that every doctor, every technician, the anesthesiologist, the receptionist in the front office, if you are working in an abortion cl clinic and you are just the cleaner, the Lord holds you complicit in the death of every child. And he said he will judge from the top down. The mother who told her 16 year old, Henrietta, you're just too young. We, we can't afford this now. We're going to send you to your grandmother in Cedar Springs, and uh, she will help you take care of it. The grandmother who received Henrietta, Henrietta who did it, the boyfriend who drove her there, or the boyfriend who gave the money to pay for it, or the husband who gave the money to pay for it. The entire states that undergird this huge machinery that eats up the children of the world, hear my voice this day. If you are watching this video and this sin is upon you and you have not repented of it, at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the day of judgment, you will bear the wrath of the punishment that goes with the taking of a human life. But if you have confessed this sin from your heart and the guilt is still troubling you, understand that this is the work of the enemy to continue to contaminate you with shame and guilt for a sin that the Lord God has already exonerated you from. To those who lie down in the bed of fornication, I am speaking to you in a generation that tells you that if you are burning with passion, God understands. That if you want to masturbate yourself, it is not the height of idiocy, for everybody knows that the act of sex contains two. But there you are with yourself. And the Lord says in many of the prophecies that I have already made videos for in, this, in the sin series, that how unwise are you to kindle a fire in your members, in your own body, that you then have to put out. You are without a partner for the act of love needs to. 
but you kindle a fire in your own members and then you are forced to consummate the act with yourself. And yet you tell yourself, God knows my struggle. God knows my heart. God knows that you are a fornicator, a sinner. And if you do not stop this act and repent, you will be judged for it. In the early church, the apostle Paul wrote, there was, there arose a contention against a group of Jews in the book of Acts who were saying, yes, we see according to the Testament and the testimony of Peter, that God has indeed given the Holy spirit to the Gentiles. But we still feel that in order for Gentile Christians to really be Christians, we think that they should be circumcised in their, in their male parts and that they should also keep the law of Moses. But a huge contention arose and the apostles actually had, they convened and they had a meeting. And what they agreed was is, no, the Holy Spirit is the mark that these people have expressed the requisite faith in God to be considered Christians. And so we should lay upon them no heavier yoke. The only thing we should ask of them is that they should stop eating the food that comes from idols. So if they, if you go to the temple and you offer food to the idol and then they take it and serve it in a place, these Gentile Christians should not eat that food. They should abstain from eating food that contains blood. They should abstain from eating anything that was strangled, that died by strangulation. And they should abstain from fornication. Imagine so many sins upon the roster. And yet as far back as the book of Acts, The sin of fornicating, which is indulging in sexual activity without recognized marriage in the eyes of the state and the eyes of God, was the only sin that made it into one of the first apostolic meetings and was ensconced in a letter and then disseminated throughout all of the known world that those who were leaving the following of idols and the following of false gods and the following of evil temples should know that human beings should not unite with anyone in sexual activity unless it is your lawful wife or your lawful husband. If you are an adulterer, you are a fornicator. If you are a masturbator, you are a fornicator. If you look at porn and stimulate yourself, whether in your mind through fantasies or upon your mortal body, you are a fornicator. If you are engaged and not yet married and thinking that the presence of a piece of metal upon your finger now entitles you to pick the fruit of the married, you are a fornicator. And should you lose your life, the Lord Jesus Christ will judge you to the full for this sin. So as you hear my voice, Whether the demons in you become so angry, I am not moved. It was not man who sent me. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who showed me how many he is cradling in his arm because of the intemperance of man. Intemperance means that you do not have the self-control to wait for what you desire. So you want to pick the fruit while it is still green on the tree and then cut off the root and cast it into a pit latrine or cast it into a toilet or take the baby and lay it out in the forest so a wolf can eat it and think that those actions eradicate your sin. The Lord has marked every single thing down and those without repentance will have no coverage whatsoever in the day of judgment. Feeling bad is not repentance opening your mouth and confessing your sin according to 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 to 10 is repentance. When you confess your sin to the Lord in full, God, I, the woman did this. God, I, the man knew of this and I condoned it. I paid for it. Or at least I said nothing to stop her. And in my heart, I was relieved because I'm only 19 years old and I've got a future with the NBA and I didn't want a kid to ruin it. If you do not confess to the sin, your sin to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm here to let you know that to this day and to your dying day, that sin is upon you. If you are married and you fornicated before you were married and you thought that getting married fixed it, your sin is upon you. You must confess your sin and then the blood of Jesus eradicates it from your record so that when you die and they are reading out the record of your life, you will not be shocked to find out that just because you got married five years ago, it doesn't mean that for the previous three years, the fornicating with your boyfriend with the ring on your finger was eradicated. Marriage doesn't fix 
fornication. Repentance of the sin of fornication is the only thing that fixes fornication. Repentance of the sin of abortion is the only thing that fixes abortion. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. Until I see you again, God bless you. Stay in the way. The way is narrow. The road is straight. And there are few who find it. Nevertheless, because Re Re Revelation 6 says that I saw before the throne of the Lamb a great multitude that had cleansed their robes and had come through great tribulation. This tells me that even if the road is narrow and the gate is straight, there are still and will be those who find it. So it is your decision and your choice to be of that way, who find the narrow road and find the straight gate and enter by it and stay saved. Till I see you again. Goodbye. <laughs>